Hi, Andrea here. So often when going through a big life event, like getting diagnosed with aggressive breast cancer, your first instinct is to isolate yourself and go internally. And on top of it, then worry and imagine the worst. Since you don't know what lies ahead, the first instinct is to go inside. Today's topic is you don't have to go it alone. The way to make any journey like this the hardest possible is to isolate. You think you have to figure this out all by yourself instead of reaching out to your support system of people who know and love you. I speak from personal experience here. It took me a while to share what was actually going on with me. Not because I was hiding anything from people, I was just focusing on getting through it all. However, as my husband let friends and family know what was going on, gradually word spread. And that's when I woke up and realized I could actually make a difference by sharing my story as I'm now doing. When I first got diagnosed, it really did feel scary. I went to the cancer center for weekly infusions of extremely strong chemo. At the time, it took everything I had to manage my mind. At first, like everyone else, I was very self-focused, taking deep breaths to make it through the long hours of treatment each time. Then I quickly started to notice the other people around me, the nurses and technicians, as well as other patients. As I relaxed into this process, I quickly became more like myself. So I am naturally very chatty. And so I would chat with my nurses and check in how they were doing. And then when other patients sat next to me, I would smile at them. And if I could, I would open up a conversation. For the most part, they looked like they were having a hard time going through all this. Instead of focusing on this infusion as one less to have towards healing. Even if I didn't feel like it, it wasn't about me. It was about the impact I could have on them. For the most part, nobody was talking to each other. So when I had somebody next to me, I would make eye contact and simply ask them how they were doing. And then we'd get chatting. This helped make the time go by for both of us. When you go for chemo infusions, it's not just minutes, it's hours. And I was often able to lift their spirit. I would also bring things to do. For example, editing articles I had written. It was a great way to keep myself busy and make the time go by much quicker. In addition, outside the cancer center, what makes a huge difference is having a support system. Whether it's your spouse or significant other, friends or family, for the most part, people will want to help you if you just reach out and ask them. It could be as simple as helping you with your groceries or taking you to doctor's appointments. During chemo, one of the outings I looked forward to was going to the grocery store with my husband once a week. It got me out of the house and I enjoyed it. It's important to let friends and family know about what you're going through, as they will want to support you in all kinds of ways. For example, sending cards, gifts, and flowers. And in my case, many wanted to have check-in calls, which I would do when I was up to it. The more you can let people in, the better you're going to feel quicker. And if you don't have friends or family, and that could be the case, Maybe you just moved or something like that, and you don't have a big community to call on. There are a ton of support groups where they help women at all stages of treatment with advice and sharing of medical info, as well as morale-wise, helping you keep your spirits up. Since I have been sharing my journey, I've been blessed by so many people reaching out to me from all over the world. It's amazing how much people do care. Note to self, you'll never know unless you reach out and share your journey. So the key message here is, you really do not have to go it alone. In fact, it's a much better idea not to.
just letting people in will make all the difference in the world. 